Hello everyone. Welcome to our new session on understanding red team and red team assessments. Let's get started. In cybersecurity, a penetration test involves ethical hackers trying to break into a computer system with no element of surprise. The blue team or the defending team is aware of the penetration test and is ready to mount a defense. A red team goes a step further and adds physical penetration, social engineering and an element of surprise. The blue team is given no advance warning of a red team and will treat it as a real intrusion. A red team assessment is similar to a penetration test but is more targeted. The goal is to test the organization's detection and response capabilities. The red team will try to get in and access sensitive information in any way possible, as quietly as possible. A red team assessment is a goal-based adversarial activity that requires a big picture, holistic view of the organization from the perspective of an adversary. This assessment process is designed to meet the needs of complex organizations, handling a variety of sensitive assets through technical, physical, or process-based means. The purpose of conducting a red teaming assessment is to demonstrate how real-world attackers can combine seemingly unrelated exploits to achieve their goal. Let's discuss the common tactics of red team attacks. Red teaming uncovers risks to your organization that traditional penetration tests miss because they focus only on one aspect of security or an otherwise narrow scope. Some of the most common ways that red team assessors go beyond the test are Firstly, email and phone-based social engineering. With a little bit of research on individuals or organizations, phishing emails become a lot more convincing. This low-hanging fruit is frequently the first in a chain of composite attacks that lead to the goal. Next, network service exploitation. Exploiting unpatched or misconfigured network services can provide an attacker with access to previously inaccessible networks or to sensitive information. Oftentimes, an attacker will leave a persistent backdoor in case they need access in the future. Next, physical facility exploitation. People have a natural inclination to avoid confrontation. Thus, gaining access to a secure facility is often as easy as following someone through a door. When is the last time you held the door open for someone who didn't scan their badge? Next, application layer exploitation. Web applications are often the first thing an attacker sees when looking at an organization's network perimeter. Exploiting web application vulnerabilities, for example, cross-site scripting, SQL injection, cross-site request forgery, etc., can give an attacker a foothold from which to execute further attacks. Red teaming includes the below activities. Discovery, leaked database, active directory misconfiguration, external and internal network exploit, phishing attempts, payload exploits, defense evasion, security bypasses, initial compromise, privileges escalations, command and control, data exfiltration, lateral movement, and business logic checks. Let's understand various phases of red team lifecycle. First step is reconnaissance. The first phase in a red team operation is focused on collecting as much information as possible about the target. Reconnaissance, aka information gathering, is one of the most critical steps. This is done through the use of public tools, such as Maltigo, LinkedIn, Google, Twitter, Facebook, Google Earth, etc. As a result, it is usually possible to learn a great deal about the target's people, technology, surroundings and environment. This step also involves building or acquiring specific tools for the engagement. The next step is initial compromise or weaponization. An important phase in a red team operation focuses on collecting information about infrastructure, facilities, and employees. Open source intelligence gathering can be quite telling about a target, its people, its facilities, and its technical makeup, such as physical or logical security controls, foot traffic, terrain, infill, or exfil points, etc. Through thorough analysis, it begins to paint a picture of the target and its primary operations. Effective weaponization involves preparation of the operation specific to the target taking into full account intel gathered from the reconnaissance stage. This commonly includes crafting custom malicious file payloads, prepping RFID cloners, configuring hardware trojans, acquiring social engineering costumes, creating falsified personas or companies and much more. The next step is delivery or establish foothold. 
The delivery stage is a critical stage of the execution phase. This marks the active launch of the operation in totality. Here, Red Team consultants carry out the actions on the target intended to reach the Red Team operations goals. Things like physically cloning badges, social engineering face-to-face -face targets, analyzing cyber vulnerabilities, planting hardware trojans for remote network persistence, etc. Among one of the most important objectives is to note the best opportunities for exploitation. The next step is exploitation. Exploitation is exactly what it sounds like. At this point, the goal is to break in or compromise servers or apps or networks, bypass physical controls. That is, gates, fences, locks, radar, motion detection, cameras, and exploit target staff through social engineering by face-to-face, -face, email, phone, fax or SMS. The exploitation stage enables the preparation for the escalation and installation phase. The next step is installation. The installation stage's primary goal is to prepare for persistence. This could amount to cyber persistence or physical persistence, although cyber persistence is generally slightly more common. During this stage, Red Team establishes a beachhead by taking advantage steps taken in the exploitation step. Things like privilege escalation on compromised servers, shells, malicious file payload installation, usage of physical key impressions and lock-picked doors happen here. The next step is command and control. Maintaining persistence is the goal for command and control. Also generally cyber-focused, Red Team takes steps to ensure remote access to exploited systems are stable and reliable setting the stage for data exfiltration and other post-exploitation tasks or goals. On the physical and social side, manipulating people into enabling circumvention of physical barriers in order to create backdoors into facilities are key. I hope the video was useful. Please subscribe to stay on top of all the upcoming videos. Thank you.